Our last comic for tonight is one of my faves. You may remember him from last comic standing, or maybe the movie 12 Inches a Slave. <laughs> Here he is, the one and only Mr. Drew Thomas. Drew! <laughs> Eight minutes, shut up. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. So good to be back in New York. I flew in yesterday and flying now is very nervous for me because they don't know the face of terrorism, so they make up the rules as they go along. First it was fingernail file, no fingernail file, scissors, no scissors, bullets, no guns. <laughs> you could only have three ounces of lotion. I need more than three ounces of lotion, I'm black. <laughs> You can't use hotel lotion. This is the worst lotion on the face of the earth. You can't even jerk off with this lotion. You put it in your hands, it just disappears. It never makes it to your knuckles. Now the new rule, they don't check kids under 12. They don't check older people over 75, but they check me every time I'm flying. Flew into New York yesterday. I'm coming from Atlanta. There's a kid in the line. He was. Indian, Arab, Jungle Book. I couldn't tell what he was. <laughs> and he's wearing these shoes that the kids are wearing that are blinking, but I'm the only one that noticed that the shoes are counting down. <laughs> and I'm like, if these shoes get to three, I'm chopping this kid in the throat. I'm not waiting. <laughs> for these shoes to get all the way down to one. They said, if you see something, say something. I'm saying something. Check them shoes, they at six right now. So the kid go through, then the older gentleman go through, then it's my turn. They pull me to the side. They gotta do secondary security check. They go get this TSA guy bigger than me. He comes up behind me, puts on the blue rubber gloves, snaps them in my ear as he proceeds to tell me in a low tone what he's about to do to me sexually. I'm gonna take these two fingers, I'm gonna rub them around your nipples, I'm gonna go down to your belly button, put two in your waistband, come around to the front, flip the tip of your dick, go down your leg, come up your other leg, kiss you on the back of your neck. And the only choice I had was, do you want this done here or inside the glass room? And I'm like, just fuck me right here. There's no need to go inside the glass room. You already got my belt and my lotion. <laughs> it's scary, but you know, you try not to judge people. You gotta be open-minded today. You gotta be open-minded to dating people from different races, different religions, different age ranges. Nobody wants to die alone. I used to date a Muslim girl. She came to me early in the relationship and said, would you consider becoming Muslim so we could get married? And I'm like, no, I'm Christian. I just want one wife and a girlfriend. Who wants four wives? <laughs> Nobody wants to come home from a night of drinking and be like, I was out with the fellas. 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 But then the relationship started getting serious. As time went on, I had to be considerate. I had to be fair. I had to say to myself, well, if I'm allowed to express myself to my God, I have to allow her to express herself to her God. So I started thinking about things Christians say, like, for the love of God, get down from there. For the love of God, turn the music down. And I'm like, wait a minute. The day she yell out, for the love of Allah, I got to chop her in the throat, because that's what they say <laughs> just before they blow up shit, and I'm not waiting to find out if you part of some sleeper cell and you just got your text message to go do your part. I don't know how extreme she is. So that relationship ended and um, I moved out to Vegas three years ago and I was depressed. I'm sitting in my apartment and my friend was like, you gotta get back out there. You gotta give it another shot. And I'm like, I'm done with dating. No more dinners, no more movies. I'm not doing it. He said, I know what you need. 
you need a chubby girl. You ain't never dated no chubby girl. Chubby girls are fun. So I went and found a chubby girl, but nobody told me chubby girls eat your leftovers. I didn't plan for this. I live by myself. I don't have extra meals. She would wake me up, call me in the middle of the day, and be like, I left early this morning quietly. I didn't want to make no noise. Yeah, but you took my lunch, bitch, is what you did. I was gonna eat that spaghetti when I woke up. <laughs> it's hard to find a wife. You can go to clubs and bars, but I don't like going to nightclubs. Nightclubs is full of single mothers and liars. <laughs> it's a lot of single mothers in the club. Single mothers are doing a good job, keep up the good work, but the world is crazy and you need to wait a while before you introduce the guys you date into your kids. I went out with this single mother two times. I'm at work, the school called me to come pick up her son. <laughs> You can't put my name on the list to come pick up your son. I only seen this dude two times in the dark at your house. They wear uniforms now, they got the same little haircut. I might pick up the wrong kid. Now this dude on my back seat wheezing, I don't need that, I don't need that. But I'm not gonna give up. I met an older white lady on the flight. She said, I wanna come to Vegas and hang with the comedian. I said, come on Tammy, you welcome. Tammy flew herself to Vegas. We hanging out in my apartment. Tammy says, I want to smoke weed with you. I haven't smoked weed since my son was in high school. I said, Tammy, this ain't the weed when you was in high school. This, this don't got no sticks and no seeds in it. This is the stuff white people grow. They weed got names. So I roll one up. We pass it back and forth. Tammy start coughing. She go to the bathroom. I finish it off by myself. Three, four minutes later, I hear her calling me from the bathroom. Drew? Drew, Drew. I said, what's the matter, Tammy? She said, I'm not feeling well. I said, what's wrong? She was like, my heart's beating fast and I think I'm having a panic attack and I think we should call emergency. I was like, we are not calling nobody, Tammy. This was your idea. You a white lady in my apartment with weed? That's possession with intent. I'm not calling nobody. You put this trip together. Thank you guys so much.